Hi, and welcome to our tutorial on creating a horror screen glitch effect using the full screen shader graph new feature in Unity 2022.2. In this tutorial, we'll be showing you how to use the full screen shader graph to create a screen glitch effect that will add a creepy and unsettling element to your horror game or video. So let's get started. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for everyone. On Unity Asset Store, there is a great deal for the New Year sales where you can get up to 50% discount for most of the assets. Additionally, if you buy assets for more than $300, you get additional discount at 20% for entering the coupon code HELLO2023. I place the link for this sale down in the description in addition to many other free assets for you. Make sure that you create a new project using Unity 2022.2 because this is a new feature presented by Unity in that version. So we can start by creating a 3D sample scene URP. So we will use that template and let's name the project Screen Glitch Effect. To be able to add full screen effects to the URP, we need to go first to the project settings, then go to graphics, double click on the current scriptable render pipeline settings, then select the current renderer data. And down, we need to add a new renderer feature, which is the full screen pass renderer feature. We keep all the settings the same except the pass index. We change it from procedural to blit because that will allow us to gain access to the full screen in shader graph. So immediately after you added the full screen pass renderer, you'll notice that something changed on your scene and it become something white or maybe negative colors. And you can see there is a pass material and this material we will change it to animate other materials to control the full screen effect. So let's create a new shader graph and which is full screen shader graph Let's name it screen glitch shader. Then let's create a new material and name it screen mat to hold our shader graph. Now all the things that left is to replace the material we created with the past material. And immediately you will, you will see a gray screen. So let's go to the shader graph and do some tests to make sure that we have control of the screen effects. The magical trick here is only one node. We will use the URP screen node to get what the screen holds currently. So create a new URP sample buffer node and set the source buffer to blit source. Then simply, now we can do any shader we want to apply it to the screen. And so for testing purposes, let's create a test color, then multiply it with the current frame in the scene and see how we can change the color of whatever is showing on the screen. Multiply both the color and URP sample buffer, save and go back to the scene. On white, we have the normal colors. We can change all the colors of the objects on the screen to any other color. And as you can see, now we have full control of what's appearing on screen and we are applying a full screen effect. So let's start by creating the glitch horror effect. Okay, let's go back to shader graph and delete all the current nodes. The screen glitch effect consists of three parts. First part is the noise. Second part is the flickering and the third is the scan lines. So we will start by creating the noise on the screen. We can start by adding a UV node, then we split it to gain access to the Y axis to do a noise on the Y axis only. That's how usually the glitches shows in horror movies or video games. Then we create a gradient noise node and we link the UV to it to distribute the noise on the Y axis only we can add a float here to control the noise amount and we can set it as a default value for 50 and we can see now a nice lines representing the noise on the Y axis. 
Next, we want to move this noise, so of course we will need a time node. And to control the speed or the strength of the glitch, we can create a new float and name it glitch strength. Multiply the time with glitch strength, then add it to the splitted value of the y-axis, then connect it to the UV to, to get this nice movement of the noise lines. Currently, the noise is not strong enough, and as you can see, there is no black lines. They are mostly a dark gray, but we want a stronger level of the noise, so we can use the remap node to strengthen the noise as following. So create a remap node, then connect the output of the gradient noise to the input of it, change the in min max to 0 on x, 1 on y, and out min max to x minus 1 and y1. And now you can see there is a great contrast between the black and white lines, and this is what we need exactly. Let's group everything in one group and let's name it noise to keep things arranged and organized. Now let's create the flickering effect by starting from the gradient noise node. Then we need, of course, again, time to control the glitch strength. So we multiply the time node with the glitch strength again, and we connect it to the UV on the gradient noise node. And to strengthen the flickering effect, we multiply the gradient noise with itself twice. So we use a multiply node one time and a second time. Then thirdly, to make the uh, black areas more vivid, we multiply again with 0 0.1. Let's group all the new nodes in a flickering group. Then we need to add the flickering to the noise. So we use a multiply node to multiply the results of the noise with the result of the flickering to get this nice glitchy effect. Now we need to apply this glitch effect to the screen by offsetting the white lines and keeping the black lines. So we create a vector 2 to only affect the x-axis and we link it to a tiling and offset node on the offset of the tiling and offset node. And finally, we create a URP sample buffer node to get the current frame from the screen and we change the source buffer to blit and we connect the results to the color, save and go back to the scene and now you can see this awesome glitch effect started working perfectly. And of course we can adjust the noise amount and the glitch strength from the material and see the results immediately on the scene. Let's go back to the shader graph and group the last nodes into applying the glitch to the screen group. And as an extra step, we can add scan lines to make this effect looks more creepy and also more eye-catchy. To create the scan lines without texture, we can start by a sign node. Then we use a tiling and offset node and we split it to, the, to gain access to the y-axis to create a sign or lines on the y-axis by increasing the tiling only on the y-axis to 600 value. Then to move the scan lines, we can borrow the multiply of the time by the glitch strands by using an add node. So we connect the results of the multiply using an add node, then we connect it to the sign and we can now see the scan lines moving upward. To gain control over the visibility of the scan lines, we use a clamp node and we create also a vector one scan lines strength. Then we connect the scan line strength to the minimum value in the clamp. That will make all the points or the vertices in that node to be white, which eliminates the scan lines. So we can control the visibility or the strength of the scan lines using this float. To see the results of the scan line, you can use a multiply node to multiply the scan lines with the URP 
screen buffer and connect it to the color and now you can see the scan lines but they are very sharp that uh, annoying or covering the screen in a bad way so to mitigate the black lines we can use the following we can mitigate the effect of the black lines by using a remap node and changing the out min max which control the black lines and setting the minimum value to 0.2 that will create a nice scan lines without damaging the scene behind it and now as you can see we can get soft scan lines and not sharp ones while keeping the scene very viewable and vivid behind now we can group all the nodes responsible for the scan lines in a group then we connect the results of the glitch back to the urp buffer and we can have now the final effect visible and of course we can control everything instantly from the material properties that we created so we can change the noise and the glitch strengths we can also change the scan line visibility and we can make all those parameters as sliders to ease controlling them so for example we can set the noise amount to be a slider between 1 and 100 also for the glitch strengths that will make all the parameters can be changed easily using sliders and that will help us later to control them by code or even when we create an animation for them now let's create a controller for those values by creating a new script and let's name it a glitch controller of course we need a reference to our material so we create a public material and name it mat then we need three floats to control the floats on the material the first float is for the noise amount the second for glitch strengths and the third one for scan lines strengths then in the update function we set those floats to the floats in the material in the shader graph and for of course to do that we need the accurate reference names from the shader graph so for example for setting the noise amount we write material.setFloat and we type the reference name exactly as we set it from the shader graph then we assign it assign to it the noise amount from the inspector and we do the same for all other floats so we set uh, the value for the glitch strengths and also for the scan line strengths save the script and go back to the scene and now we need to assign the material into the inspector now we can create an animation to control those values so we go to window and open the animation tab then we create a new animation and let's name it glitch effect now we can hit record and adjust the values over time so we can move the timeline into 20 milliseconds then adjust the values for the noise amount to 100 the glitch trends to 100 while for the scan line strengths we should start by the value 1 which make them invisible then change it to 0 to make them visible at the middle of the timeline then finally we copy the first frames maybe to 1 second to repeat the loop of the animation I use the same technique for creating the scene that I showed at the beginning of the video but instead of using the animator I use Cinemachine and the timeline there to create the cutscene. Of course I used some free assets from Unity Asset Store and I used some free audio effects, sound effects. I'll provide the links for all of those down in the description. And if you want to learn how to create a cutscene, I already created a video about that. I'll provide the link for the tutorial down in the description. And that's it for today's video. If you are enjoying watching this video, please be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I also wanted to take a moment to thank all 
of my Patreon supporters who keep this channel going on. If you are a Patreon supporter, be sure to check out the project files that you can download as a part of your support. Till next video, see you soon.